बिसमीम् अल्लाम डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू दी ऑनलाइन लेक्चर ऑन नॉन लीनियर कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू गो थ्रू द थर्ड लेक्चर ऑन नॉन लीनियर कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स कोर्स एंड वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट दिस लेक्चर विद द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लिपशिट्स कॉन्टीन्यूटी सो फॉर लिपशिट्स कॉन्टीन्यूटी वी हैव टू एज्यूम टू नॉम स्पेसिस वी एंड डब्ल्यू where two different types of normed are defined so we have already discussed what normed spaces are uh, so basically a normed space is uh, a vector space uh, or where uh, some certain given norm is defined for each vector in the vector space a function h from one normed space to another normed space would be considered a lipschitz continuous function at the point x0 or at some you know this is x0 is the vector in the vector space if there exist gamma greater than 0 and some constant l less than infinity such that uh, for any two vectors x y within the Uh, ball of radius gamma around x not we have the norm or you know the norm of the difference between h of x and h of y must be less than equal to l times the norm of the difference between x and y so what does this mean this means that you would consider the well, first of all lipschitz continuity is a point wise property so we check the lipschitz continuity at each point in a vector space so wherever you have whenever you have to check the lipschitz continuity you have to find some region some neighborhood some ball of radius delta around the point at which you are checking the lipschitz continuity and this ball this uh, region this neighborhood would be should be such that that within this neighborhood for any two vectors the difference or the distance between the function values is less than or equal to some multiple of the distance between the uh, vector the di the distance between the uh, vectors so this is in the mag the norm of difference is basically distance so this is distance between the vector values and this is distance between the corresponding function values so function value dis difference should be less than equal to some multiple of the vector value difference okay so there there is no restriction on this multiple this can be 1000 2000 10000 as long as it is less than infinity so this is lipschitz continuity lipschitz continuity implies uh, simple continuity uh, how does that imply simple continuity for example in the simple continuity we require that for every epsilon there exists delta such that if the distance between x and x not is less than delta by the way x not is the point at which we are checking the continuity continuity is also point wise property and lipschitz continuity is also point wise property so if the distance from of x from x not is less than delta then the distance between the function values should be less than epsilon so here let's suppose this delta is uh is, suppose this uh, function is lipschitz continuous if this is lipschitz continuous it satisfies this property so that means that if x uh, minus y uh, this distance is less than let's suppose epsilon divided by l then l times this distance will be less than or equal to epsilon so again i repeat this if the if the function is lipschitz continuous and the distance between x and y is less than epsilon divided by l then the distance between ep, uh, the l multiply by the distance between the two vectors will be less than epsilon so l multiply by um, the distance between vector is greater than the distance between the functions so distance between the functions will be less than epsilon so you can uh, you know 
derive this continuity definition from the Lipschitz continuity definition by putting delta equal epsilon over L okay so this is the depiction that if this is Lipschitz then this will be less than epsilon if x minus y is less, less than epsilon over L okay <coughs> So suppose that we have a function from Rn to Rn. Rn is the Euclidean space of n dimensions. And suppose that this function is differentiable. If this function is differentiable and there exists some gamma greater than zero and some constant L less than infinity and some point x naught such that for all x in the ball of radius gamma around x naught the slope partial h by partial x which is the slope of the function with respect to x or in vector case this will be like a jacobian matrix so if the magnitude or norm of the jacobian matrix is less than l then this function will be lipschitz continuous so with with the lipschitz continuity this is uh, the constant of lipschitz continuity in this case it will be the bound on the slope of the function or bound on the norm of jacobian of the function so note that this uh, if uh, x belong to rn then this norm is basically induced norm because jacobian is a matrix so this norm of a matrix is induced norm if a function is Lipschitz continuous with respect to certain norm then it is Lipschitz continuous with respect to all other norms that are equivalent to the given norm although the corresponding Lipschitz constant for each norm may be different so this uh, is um, a fact that is saying that you know no matter what kind of norm here we have used two norm we can use three norm four norm five norm and in all these norms this l will be different but the lipschitz uh, if a function is uh, lipschitz in one norm then it is lipschitz in all other norms which are equivalent to this norm so the equivalence between the two norms we have already discussed okay so this is uh, this is some useful fact where h is differentiable although not every lipschitz continuous function is dif differentiable but every differentiable function is lipschitz continuous which you can infer from this uh, this fact that if a function is differentiable then you can always find uh, its lipschitz constant similarly if a function is lipschitz continuous you can always uh, prove its continuity so in terms of smoothness differentiability is uh, the highest uh, level of smoothness then is Lipschitz continuity and uh, below Lipschitz continuity is the continuity then uh, we talk further about uh, Lipschitz continuity and differentiability Lipschitz continuity does not imply differentiability for example uh, the saturation function uh, is uh, we can use that to so, so what is that saturation function saturation of x is equal to x whenever x is uh, between minus 1 and 1 saturation of x is equal to 1 when x is greater than 1 and it is equal to minus 1 when x is less than minus 1 so this saturation function has a Lipschitz constant l equal 1 uh, because at uh, you know it is uh, uh, piecewise differentiable but it's overall not overall it is not differentiable I will show you why this is not differentiable so saturation of x minus saturation of y is always less than equal to x minus y but saturation is not differentiable at two points this 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 point and this point so at all at both the knee points the slope is undefined so that is why so differentiability is also uh, a point wise property so if a function is differentiable at 
all the points only then it is called differentiable function otherwise uh, saturation function is differentiable at all the points except for two points so these two points rule out the differentiability property for saturation function and if you look at the you know individual uh, partial you know pieces of the saturation function then you can see that the the slope of the saturation function can be either zero at some points and it can be one at some points so maximum possible slope of saturation function is one that is why you can see here the Lipschitz constant is also one so these are the uh, small things that you have to keep in mind that you know how differentiability Lipschitz continuity and simple continuity are relevant to each other once these concepts are clear then we can go ahead in the course and study more advanced concepts one more concept is piecewise continuity so let us suppose we have a function uh, let's say it's a function that operates on real numbers and uh, generates some vector in the vector space v and uh, this function would be considered piecewise continuous if for all integers k greater than 0 uh, if you define the function from interval minus k to k onto v then within this interval this function is, should be continuous except for a finite number of points so this function is allowed to be discontinuous at a finite number of points not allowed to be discontinuous at infinite number of points and this should happen for for all arbitrary values of uh, arbitrary integer values of k at each point of discontinuity uh, let's call that point t i the limit from left side and the limit from the right side should both exist and should both be finite so this is the second requirement from a piecewise continuous function first requirement is that within within every interval every arbitrary length interval uh, the function should be continuous except for a finite number of points and second requirement is that at each point of discontinuity the left and the right limits must exist and must be finite so canonical example of uh, piecewise continuous function is a square wave and canonical non example of piecewise continuous function is a tangent function so you uh, might remember that tangent function is undefined when when x is equal to pi by 2 because cos of pi by 2 is 0 so it becomes a problem same thing happens at 3 pi by 2 and 5 pi by 2 and so on so we fix that problem by defining h of x to be 0 at x equal k pi by 2 so this function is not undefined at any value of x but still the problem is that this function goes almost to plus infinity and then suddenly it jumps back to 0 and then suddenly it jumps to almost negative infinity almost not exactly so then it's doing that uh, repetitively so what is the problem here uh, why is this a non-example then uh, because the limit at at a point of discontinuity which is this point uh, the left and the right limit are exist they do exist but they are not finite so left and right limit in this case so left limit is is plus infinity and the right limit is minus infinity so so the, those limits are not finite so this function is not piecewise continuous another non example is a function h of x which is 1 for all rational numbers and 0 for all irrational numbers so you can see if you know about the density of the rational numbers and density of the real numbers then you would know that within every no matter how small this interval is within every small interval there are infinite number of rational numbers and infinite number of irrational numbers so here the, there is no problem of you know uh, the 
the limits of, of the left and right side there is no problem here in this requirement but there is a problem here except for a finite number of points so discontinuity is only allowed at a finite number of points but this uh, this function is discontinuous at an at an infinite number of points no matter how small you take this interval so this function is also not piecewise continuous because it violates this condition so these two examples should clarify the type of functions which might look like piecewise continuous but they are not then we go to our next topic which is uh, the solution of differential equations on rn uh, so any equation x dot equal f of t comma x of t where f is a function of time and f is a function of x and x itself is also a function of time so you can imagine here that a lot of uh, functions are going on within this function so uh, with initial condition x at t naught is equal to some constant x naught this is a differential equation first order nonlinear differential equation uh, but this is a first order vector nonlinear differential equation with some in vector initial condition so this will give us if you integrate on both sides then you have you know uh, this integral of this f is equal to uh, the derivative will cancel out with integral and you will have some initial condition and this if you rearrange things then x of t is equal to integral of f of t tau comma x of tau so this since this is a definite integral so that is why we have changed the variable we have created a dummy variable inside the integral and then there is this is initial condition so so formally we can define the solution phi of t i mean we can name the solution to be any function of time any function of time phi of t would be a solution of this differential equation if uh, well any solution would be defined on some time interval starting from the initial time to some final time if for all the time within this interval this function satisfies this equation so which is the equation of the the solution of the differential equation if any function satisfies this equation then that function would be the solution of this equation okay so remark is that we do not have to require that the solution is differentiable at all the points in time uh, because you know uh, we are not saying that phi would be a solution if it is if its derivative would be equal to f of t comma phi of t we are not saying that we are saying that phi will be a solution of this differential equation if it's integral uh, if uh, f function the integral of f function of phi plus some constant would be uh, equal to phi of t then it will be a so that this definition of a solution does not require that uh, the derivative of phi should be uh, this uh, i mean it, it does not require phi to be uh, differentiable it only requires is to be integrable and uh, a piecewise continuous function is integrable uh, on a definite well okay so this is the uh, this is about uh, the solution of a differential equation so this is just the definition of the solution of differential equation next we look at the uh, theorem about the existence and uniqueness of uh, the solution of differential equation so suppose that uh, f of t comma x of t is piecewise continuous in time and satisfies the following Lipschitz condition if there exists you know finite constants capital T greater than T naught and gamma greater than 0 and L greater than 0 such that well you can say l less than infinity such that f of t comma x minus f of t comma y so this this is the Lipschitz condition so what we are requiring is that the function f of t comma x should be Lipschitz with respect to x and it should be piecewise continuous with respect to time so there are two requirements 
one is that this function should be piecewise continuous in time and the second is that this function should be Lipschitz continuous with respect to x so if these two requirements are met for all x y in some neighborhood of the initial condition and for some time uh, ranging from t naught to capital T then there will exist some delta greater than 0 such that the differential equation has exactly which differential equation this differential equation with this initial condition will have a unique solution on the interval t naught to t naught plus delta there are a few things to be noticed here first of all the requirement of uh, this function Lipschitz on the interval t naught to capital T that time interval can be different from the time interval on which the solution exists so this is not the same secondly uh, we are looking at the solution the existence and uniqueness of the solution with respect to some given initial condition okay we are not looking at it for for all initial conditions that is why we call it local existence and uniqueness so local uh, this is local in in two senses uh, first sense is that you know uh, we are only looking at the neighborhood of a given initial condition we are not um, claiming anything about other initial conditions other than x naught secondly it is local in terms of time that we are only uh, claiming or uh, we are only requiring the Lipschitz continuity to be you know over a finite interval of time and correspondingly we are claiming the existence and uniqueness of solution over some other finite interval of time so this is local in terms of time and this is local in terms of vector space x uh, vector space uh, to which x belongs in this case this vector space would be rn and dimensional euclidean vector space so we'll talk more about uh, this theorem in the next lecture uh, so far you just have to understand that this theorem requires two properties on f of x one is piecewise continuity with respect to time other is Lipschitz continuity with respect to x and once these two things are guaranteed within some neighborhood of the initial condition and with, for some time interval finite time interval then we can guarantee that there exists some other finite time interval we don't know how long this interval is but we do know that there would exist this interval over which the uh, equation will exist and will be unique uh, the solution of the equation will be ex will exist and will be unique so this is the end of uh, lecture number three let me just uh, summarize this lecture briefly <clears throat> So if you look at this lecture number three, we started with the concept of Lipschitz continuity. Lipschitz continuity requires that the distance between the function values should be some multiple of the should be less than some multiple of the distance between the vector values. And we saw that Lipschitz continuity is superior in terms of smoothness to the simple continuity because we can uh, derive continuity from the li every Lipschitz continuous function is simple continuous but not the other way around every continuous function is not Lipschitz continuous then we looked at uh, the relationship between differentiability and Lipschitz continuity first of all in terms of vector space or vector valued functions the uh, induced norm of the Jacobian if it is less than some constant then that constant can be treated as Lipschitz uh, constant then we uh, stated that you know if a function is Lipschitz continuous in some norm then it is also Lipschitz continuous in all the other norms which are equivalent to this norm although the Lipschitz constant value may change from one norm to another norm then the uh, differentiability and Lipschitz continuity we looked at uh, uh, we already know that diff every differentiable function is Lipschitz continuous but uh, the purpose of this example was to show that not every Lipschitz function is differentiable so uh, a prime example is saturation function 
then we looked at the definition of piecewise continuity which requires basically two things one is that uh, for every finite interval of domain there should be only finite number of uh, discontinuities and the second is that at each point of discontinuity the limits from the left and the right should be uh, should exist and should be finite the canonical example is a square wave and non examples we studied two non examples one of the non examples does not satisfy this condition the limit uh, being finite and the other uh, non example does not satisfy this condition where the number of points are uh, of discontinuity are not finite okay solution of differential equation we looked at the vector value differential equation we defined its solution to be any function which satisfies this equation which means that we are not defining this solution to be any function which is differentiable this is important uh, because uh, this helps us in um, finding the solution for the differential equation or at least characterizing the solution for differential equation okay local existence and uniqueness uh, of uh, the solution of differential equation this is a theorem and it is about the local existence and uniqueness local in terms of time and local in terms of space so this requires that f should be piecewise continuous in time and Lipschitz continuous in x once f is of this type then you can guarantee that the solution would exist and will be unique with this initial condition only for some interval of time which we don't know yet so that was today's lecture uh, in the next lecture we will talk more about the local existence and uniqueness theorem thank you for listening